Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Mary discusses homework on the subject of facade and hurt self, filmed on the 3rd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay, guys, so we've done a little rearrangement of the program. We're going to cover your homework first in this session. Then we're going to have a big group personal truth session. And then we'll go on to forgiveness and repentance this afternoon. Um, but we'll tell you more about that in the group personal truth session. So this was going to be with Jesus, but it's with me. Ah. Never mind. Um, <laughs> or maybe that's good. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, so what I'm going to look at with you today is obviously you haven't had your homework for forgiveness and repentance yet, but we're going to look at the uh, understanding self homework, which was about facade, the facade self, the hurt self. So does everyone remember that? I'm just going to run through a little bit of revision with you on the emotions of the facade self. So do you all remember these lovely descriptive words that we had? So loves, addiction, compulsion, resistance, coercion and manipulation. Cruelty, nastiness, meanness, arrogance, condescension and superiority. Insensitive, unaware, pretending, false, closed, controlled and untrusting. And many other things there. Immovable, irrational. So everyone remembers that we covered all that stuff. And the facade self is the main cause of our unloving and sinful actions, which is why we're encouraging you guys to take a good look at it this week. So, who remembers the intellectual process of deconstruction? Do you remember what we covered in that session? In that section? Anyone? Yep, Salia? Um, the first one was like intellectually becoming aware of what the facade or addiction is. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, very good. Actually, the very first thing is we begin in a place of denial, okay. but yeah. beyond that, yeah. yes, we have an awareness of the unloving behaviour yeah. and that it's a sin. Yeah. Remember, we talked about that again yesterday in the addictions talk. Does anyone remember what happens next, Kadira? Kadira, um, then you feel your emotional response in that unloving behaviour? Yeah, that was a lot of what we talked about in the addictions. I'm just going to pop up these intellectual ones because they, they vary a little. So keeping in mind we do this with all of our addictions as well, but the stuff we talked about, about challenging addictions, was sort of additionals. It's other things that you're going to do from an emotional perspective. So let's quickly run through these. Um, so the awareness that the unloving behaviour is a sin that has a cause within ourselves. This is a big one to recognise, ah, oh, it's not somebody else's fault, this unloving behaviour comes from me. The willingness to identify the cause within ourselves and then what the cause might be intellectually. And then the intellectual awareness of God's truth. And we've gone through that in a couple of different ways with you through the week, having the two sides of the board. Remember, I had God's truth and my feelings or my beliefs. That's a good way to challenge yourself around some of these things. Okay. And then the emotional process of deconstruction, which follows basically the same steps, but from an emotional perspective, from a soul-based perspective. And eventually we get to the soul release of the cause and we receive God's truth on the issue. Okay. Now, these are all Jesus' slides, so I'm not that familiar with them. Let's keep going through the emotions of the hurt. Obviously, I know the content, but I'm just not sure what he's got up there. Okay. So we've just covered the, the facade and the, emotion, the deconstruction process. Now, we'll quickly look at the emotions in the hurt. So all of these very um, descriptive words that helped you connect some of you with some of those emotions. I'm just going to pop them up really quickly. If 
you to look at again. Okay. And this was, remember, the, the content that I went through with you, again, after the facade deconstruction talk. And I said, these you're going to have to go through that same deconstruction process with your hurt self, but these are some extra pointers to go through. So we have to acknowledge that the hurt self exists and the hurt within it exists. Acknowledge how we currently treat the hurt self. And that was some of your homework um, we'll get on to shortly. Stop the harsh treatment. Allow the hurt self its voice. Allow the childlike feelings. Remember, said they were really raw and emotional and uncontrolled. Begin to take care of the childlike hurt parts of ourselves. And what was the very last thing that I mentioned that we've been emphasising all week that you need to do? Tess? Educate the hurt child? Yes. Let yourself, give yourself this education in love that we've all been lacking. Okay, so let's look at the homework. There was, how does my adult facade feel about my hurt self and its feelings? How does my hurt self feel in response to my adult facade? Oh, and Jesus actually had some other really cool homework, but you mustn't have covered it, honey, which was begin to... Did he talk to you guys about beginning to note down your unloving actions? Yes. So that's the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about. So before we get on to that, so the question was begin to notice your unloving actions and start to, in this intellectual process of deconstruction, wasn't it, to look at what might be the causes. What am I doing and what might be the causes? So who had a go at that and would like to talk about what they discovered? Trent? Um, at the start of it, I just feel I've become... We had the intellectual awareness this morning about my, how my role was in the family, even though I've realised mum was angry and I have codependent relationships with older women and those things. I feel I've just got the actual awareness how I was with my parents, how I wanted their love, yep. how I sit on the fence now because it was between placating mum and dad to feel their love in the family. Right. Um, and then I've started looking at how that's loving to myself and to the environment. Yeah. And then even start doing the list of what my belief is about love and my parents did the best they could and those sorts of unloving beliefs and then comparing them to God's, what I feel God's truths are. Awesome, Trent. So you've actually done quite a lot of like recognising some of your unloving behaviour, recognising even just intellectually the causes, and then you've even started on the, the next question, which is how is your facade treating your hurt self? Like all these messages like, oh, mum and dad did their best, you shouldn't feel like this. So, yes. yeah, awesome. Awesome, thank you. thank you. Anyone else? If we go to Andrew over here. And Rebecca at the back over there, yeah. Andrew, um, last night at the dinner table, yourself and Jesus come to sit down across from me and um, I told you that the seat was taken. Yep. And at the time I felt um, disappointment and also also excitement for the fact that you know, I had in mind I had an opportunity to talk to you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, like a, a little bit more than on a social scene is what I am right now. Um, yep. And then also at the same time, um, with the person who was sitting across from me as well. Uh, if I had have allowed you guys to sit there, he would have actually missed out on his seat, which he already had. And, and I'm sort of a bit confused about the what was loving, what was unloving in that, in that whole instance. So I, I've been pondering on that yep. uh, last what, night. What did you come up with? Well, um, we actually had the discussion at the table um, with the, the guy opposite me. I told him what happened and the feelings that I had inside me and, um, you know, like he, the fact that um, if it was just any other anybody else other than yourself and Jesus who come to uh, sit across from me, the same action would have actually, um, you know, would have said, look, I'm sorry, this seat's already taken. So yeah. um, I guess the process that I sort of went through was to, know that it's there, that I did have a feeling inside me and that they were a presence and the like and then um, you know, I basically thought, well, okay, well, is this loving or is it not loving um, to tell you? 
that it's not loving or was it, oh, I'm just a little bit confused about what well, actually... Well, I reckon you've answered your question, haven't you? You've, you've said if it was anyone else, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. So, and that seat was taken and we don't, we don't feel like we deserve any special treatment. So, we don't feel we're more special than other people. So, I feel you did the loving thing. I wonder about the discussion you had with the person opposite you though. Was that loving to make them feel like perhaps they'd been involved in something that disappointed you when really they had no part in it. I don't know what the discussion was like. But. Yeah, yeah, and that's the whole, uh, I guess, the, the intellectual realisation that I had, you know, what, what's going on with me right now, you know, um, it, obviously there's a sin there because I've got a feeling behind it, so... Yeah, um, so to explore the unloving part of the, the feeling that you yeah. had, the addictive feeling of wanting yeah. to have the engagement with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Good-o, good Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Rebecca? Okay. Um, I was just reflecting on um, my relationship with my husband. Yeah. And I realised that I wasn't being loving to myself um, in that I wasn't speaking my truth and I wasn't... I was trying to keep the peace all the time and uh-huh. just... I really felt, yeah, intellectually, but I'm feeling it now emotionally too, that I need to speak... Um, God's truth. Yeah. Did you examine and, examine um, uh, what the, the codependence is for you that makes you not speak up? What you get out of that? Because that's really um, important yeah, when you're in a I'm, relationship. Yeah, I, I'm starting to realise that I'm wanting to be looked after and not take responsibility. Yes. And I'm wanting him to take the responsibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's another unloving action, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. It so is. whenever yeah. you're examining that partner relationship, mm-hmm. I would always be looking at, okay, I'm not speaking up, that's not loving, but what's, what's my kickback here? Because that's also unloving. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. an expectation I have. Mm-hmm. When you're in codependence, there's always that. So mm-hmm. if you look at it one-sided, you'll en- you can end up being more unloving to your partner because you blame them for not speaking up, oh, you you know, this is a problem with you, yeah. without seeing what was in it f- for you, what mm-hmm. you wanted from them. Yeah. But if you deal with both things concurrently, then you have a good chance of growth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, if we go to Rosa. And then is it Pamela at the back? No? Carmel, Carmel. That's right. Um, I woke up last night about 3.30 and I couldn't get to sleep. All these thoughts coming about feelings of hurt and this hasn't happened, that person hasn't done this or whatever. And I started to realise, at least intellectually, they were all coming from, um, from my addiction not being met. And... Um, when you say we're all coming, do you mean you're coming? Yeah, my yeah. thoughts that kept yeah. me awake and couldn't go back to sleep were all feelings coming from uh, addictions that I have of yeah. expectation of being met. Uh huh. Um, and uh, for a while now, I've been staying in the pain and just intellectually trying to work out the reason why. Um, and this for the major problems in my life, but I had stopped a while ago to do it for little things on a day-to-day basis because, um, yeah, well, when I started to release my anger in a safe way, I was not well accepted by anybody around me. I was uh, ridiculed by the children. I was Which... said that I was going crazy and <laughs> all that. And that exposed another addiction to you, didn't it, that you didn't want to feel about, which yeah, is about the approval and acceptance approval. of yes. your family, which is a big one for you, isn't it? We talked children, about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you've got to be careful. And remember we talked about during the week of making excuses. Oh, I'm afraid of, say, my children's disapproval, so therefore I won't take this action. When yeah. really if we trust in God's laws, we'll go, oh, I'm afraid of that, but... If, I, if my actions are being loving and truthful or, you know, and I am challenging an addiction, then I can trust God's laws. Yeah, I realised in that discussion with you that I, I put my kids above God. So yes. That's yeah, that's the biggest a thing. Good realisation, Rosa. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, and we had Carmel, yeah? Yes. Um, 
<clears throat> I've come to a realisation about codependency in my marriage going back 23 years ago. Yep. And I used to suffer PMT really, really badly. And there was a stage before we split up where I was actually... Um, I, was, I was actually on my knees begging for him. He was my husband and I was begging for him to just put his arms around me and tell me he loved me and that I'd be okay. And he couldn't. And he pushed me away. I feel I can't be married to a man who doesn't love me. So where's your unloving behaviour in that, Carmel? I feel I was being demanding of him, asking him to love me. Yeah. I feel that you might have an intellectual awareness of some of your demands, but at the moment the emotion coming out of you is still very much that he's to blame. So the emotion, the, while you're saying something intellectually, the feeling coming from you is that he was the bad guy. So you, you've got a lot of work to do. <sighs> All these years I've felt it's been, um, i felt that he's been emotionally abusive, but that's not the case. Well, I don't know, I can't comment on your marriage, <laughs> but I feel that, especially not knowing your husband, but I feel that there was obviously codependency, as you rightly pointed out, so there was things you were getting out of it, but you, you're yet to do much of that work in really yeah. understanding what that was. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good to reassess every, all of your beliefs that you've had from the past, but keeping in mind there's obviously still quite a bit of emotional justification for them. So you're going to have... This deconstruction process is going to be quite involved for you because at the moment you're intellectually toying with an idea that emotionally you disagree with which a lot of us have to go through that as we deconstruct things. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Can I say another um, one? Yeah, quickly, quickly. <laughs> yeah, quickly. Well, last night after you left Peter's table, you sat down next to us. Yes. And I just, um, I, first of all, the fear of you sitting there, but then I just felt very rude when we were asking questions of you while you were eating dinner. And I felt that was very unloving of us. Yeah, but Carmel, to your credit, you said, actually, would you guys like to eat your dinner and I won't ask you any questions? So <laughs> you, you were conscious of that. There was another person at the table who was very unloving with us who yeah. we actually asked not to come today because yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. But Thank you. No worries. Can also, just before we move on, can you see that your fear of us is also unloving? Oh. I'll just leave that with you. <laughs> Thank for you. For everyone yes. to ponder. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, if we go to Anto and then we'll come to Carty over here. Hi, Anto. Um, I realised the last couple of days that I've, since I got here, I've been in a high state of panic. And um, I've had a few cries over the sessions. And um, last night, the fear came up quite, quite intense. Um, and then afterwards I felt actually quite calm, but it was, it was almost like I'd, all the actions I've taken during the entire week has been to avoid, do I sit here, do I not sit there, do I avoid this person? Um, you know, it's, it's just been yeah. about suppressing that feeling, that the anxiety of it. Yeah. And I just had this compulsion, I just want to run, I want to get out of here. Yeah. Um, and this morning I had a couple of interactions with some women and I didn't feel that afraid. I still feel I'm quite afraid still, but yep. um, there was something different. It, and I went back to the room after breakfast and had a cry. And it's, I started to realise that I, I actually haven't seen it as a sin. It's just been my mechanism to preserve myself, to avoid being punished or potentially punished, not even true yep. that it will be punished. Yep. And that the fear stops me from engaging with people. And it's put a huge emphasis on, like, protect me from you guys and... Yeah. That's awesome, Anto. That's one of your huge blocks, isn't it? Like, yeah, but it's, it's pretty hard. Okay. And then the feel, like, the recognition that it's a sin to live in so much fear and demand protection from others. That's, 
Yeah. A lot of people live in that state and don't see it as a sin. So. Yeah, I realise that I haven't seen anything as a sin. I've been so focused on myself yeah. um, that I, I even feel I'm quite arrogant to, to realise that I'm, I don't even have a sin. You know, and I've I noticed a couple of interactions where I've said some things and I go back afterwards and say, oh, wow, that's pretty bad. And so I'm even judging it. Um, yeah, you don't want to judge it. Just let the law of compensation start to, you know, resensitize yourself to that because then you'll start to feel, oh, wow, I wasn't very, like, in harmony with love what I did because I can feel now I was acting out of fear or, or the desire to avoid the fear. Yeah. yeah. And I've had some, I've been going through some intellectual exercise about my hurt self and, yeah. and um, I realise that, that I actually don't feel I'm worthy um, I don't want myself to be worthy, you know, that it's, that's weak. It's, I've got to do everything in, in a state of arrogance and um, I haven't gone too far into it. When you say you don't want to be worthy, you mean you don't want to be humble? Yeah, I don't want yes. to be humble. I yeah. prefer to be who I am, you know. I so can cope with this, I can't cope the other way. Yeah, the soft way, the soft anto. Yeah, that's, that's cool, hey? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Cardi. Um, after my feedback yesterday with um, AJ, I wanted to run and I didn't know where to go. Um, I feel I felt angry and I also had a sense of like, um, I'm glad, glad that this is sort of finally exposed. Um, I don't think I slept and I've just been going to God and writing and writing. And I dozed off and I woke up sometime this morning and, and I had this memory of my mum saying, we've given to you more than anyone else. And then I had this feeling of just keep taking and taking and demanding. And I saw the brick wall that I built as a little girl. It's really big. <laughs> And I couldn't get through it except God's on the other side and I'm on the inside and I had no tools to get through it <laughs> except love yeah. and I don't trust. I want to stop you, Cardi. I feel like <clears throat> you got to be careful because and to give some context of what was the feedback that you received yesterday from Jesus. Um, um, that I was in denial of my demand. Yeah, 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 which I agree with. And your rage, hey? There's yeah. a lot of rage that you live in and justify. And I feel like you're going to have to do a lot of work, more than one night's work, to really connect with the level of your demand and your anger, the, the sin of that. And I don't... I feel like... There's a temptation in so many of you to run towards, oh, it was when I was a little girl and all these things, and to skip over what the facade has been doing all these years. And believe me, unless you're willing to see that, it's like seeing yourself where you are on the map that Jesus drew yesterday. Unless you're willing to see that, you really, that's going to take a lot of work. Remember, I said it took me five years? Like, and you're going to have to engage your will in wanting to see that. And I feel you like you have to be careful about going into this now, this sort of hurt, hurt, self-punishing place, which is just another avoidance of seeing where you are on the map. So that's what I want to leave you with. Thank you. Yeah. I, like I don't want to diminish what happened in your childhood, but I do feel like there's much more work for you to do to look at how, how, what you've done with your will uh, in your adult facade. Okay? Thank you, Mary. No worries. All right. Um, we come to Kay and then to Ange. And that might, we might have to move on to our next question then. Yeah, just make sure you get the mic. I realised 
just if you put the mic next to your transmitter right. rather than your mouth. Yep, that's, that's it. That's it. I, I didn't realise. I've always known. I've been in total self-reliance. That's the only way I've been able to survive. How? Uh, I like control so I can survive. Yeah, but can you feel how much you still believe that's the only way to survive? Yes. How do you think it's worked out for you? Not very well at all. No. So, okay. so I don't feel you've done the, even the intellectual work on seeing how it's not worked for you. Because you, you're still presenting it in a way that you must be self-reliant in order to survive. So there's yeah. more work to do there. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with I it. Wrote a full, a full list. Sorry? Uh, I wrote a full list of what my facade job was last night and it isn't very pretty at all. No. And then I felt my bird self. I, no, I disagree. I disagree, Kay. You haven't, you haven't reached your hurt self yet. Much more work to do on the facade. Okay. Ange? Um, Mary, I have this question just after listening to you talk to Cardi and, and yep. that's okay. Um, like the evidence is mounting for me, you know, it just comes in every day. And... Um, there are sometimes, like twice now, I feel like I have actually touched, even just emotionally, intellectually, the uh -huh. hurt self. Um, and I keep sort of denying that and trying to just go, no, I'm just going to stay with the facade. I'm just going to stay with the unloving behaviour and the addiction. Um, but, yeah. Remember we talked about in the challenging addictions talk, yeah, yeah. this phase where you get to when you feel the addiction. We yes. called it feeling the addiction. That's not yes. a very good description. Yeah. We talked about feeling some of the sadness that the addiction isn't being mm -hmm. met, feeling some of the grief that the false yeah. belief is no yes. longer justified. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I feel it's possible that you've hit that place. But, right. and I look... Yeah. I feel it's possible to reach your hurt self sometimes for yeah. a glimmer of a moment. Yeah, it's only... But, yeah. but the, if the facade is still largely involved in shutting down the hurt yeah. self, yeah. the healing for the hurt self really can't occur. No, yeah, okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. only very fleeting. I just get this what intellectual, oh, that's what it is. Yes, and see, intellectual. Yes. It's an intellectual. And remember yes. in the deconstruction process you do have these, remember Jesus called them light bulb moments? Yes. Where you suddenly yes. go intellectually, I think yes. that's what it's about. Yes. 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 So that's possible, but that's not hitting your hurt self. No. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. 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 But, but what do I do with that? Just ignore Allow it? Allow it. Allow it. Definitely. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I, I, what I've done is like I've just, okay, I just need more overwhelming evidence, God. That's what I need. I need, you know, just more. I need to see the facts of that or, you know, more about that. Yeah. See, I feel when you're feeling, yeah. you just allow feelings. There's not as much intellectual yeah, no, kind of it, analysis. It stops. Yeah. You know, it definitely does stop, yeah. I think. But but it's just an unintellectual thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just go back and, and revisit the whole thing and keep revisiting. Keep revisiting. Yeah. Yeah. Keep wanting to see yeah. Yeah. the sin. Yeah. Like, yeah, honestly, yeah. I, I just encourage all of you, just yeah. keep wanting to see the same. Yeah. I, I do feel like I get very sensitive to, the, to that, um, you know, that hurt bit. I have got a bit, like, quite sensitive to it at times. So I was just a bit confused, that's all. But yeah, I, I just feel there's real danger. Yeah. Like, unless you're willing to see the sin yeah. for what it is, yeah. then... Any hurt you feel, yeah. it's, you can't really connect to what's under the sin unless you feel the sin. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be so careful that you don't get in this cycle that I see a lot of you in, where you connect to what you call a hurt self, hurt childhood feeling, yeah. and you use it to justify more sin. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see that? Yes, yes, I can see that. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Mary. No worries. Yeah. The facade is really hard, like those all those emotions that I put up earlier. Yeah. It's hard, you know. And when you start to break through it yeah. properly, it, it, there's a softening around that whole issue. Yeah. Yeah. 
the rigidity and control that you usually experience in your yes. life around that yes. issue yeah. softens and you feel yeah. it perceptively. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that happens not just when you're feeling whatever you're feeling, no, it happens in the rest time. of your life. No, okay. Automatically your will has yeah. changed. Yes. Okay. So you don't have to try. So yeah. just be aware of yeah. that. And like we've given you lots of tools today uh, during this week to help yeah. you understand yourself and understand things, but yeah. just like I'm just encouraging you back yeah. to yeah. look at the sin, yeah. cool. <laughs> look at the addictions, yeah. and let the rest of the process. Yeah. You don't try to overanalyze what's happening. Yeah. Oh, watch yeah. this. Let the process of the emotional work you do give you evidence, yes. rather than trying to go. Oh, I felt that was that that, or yeah. was that that? Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. 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 Thanks, Marie. Okay, Jesus. Do you have anything to add to that? And, and I probably have a lot of things to add to that, actually. I feel straight, you're in addiction again with Mary, even in that discussion. You were saying yes, yes, yes to all these things, okay. which is your desire to tell the other person that you're getting it right. Remember, I talked to you about it on the first day, and uh, you're still doing that today. So you're still, you're still in that addiction of trying to prove to the other person you've got it right. So that's one problem. And then... And there's so many issues that I've seen already, actually, in this in interaction where different ones of you are still justifying unloving behaviour. You call your getting to your hurt self really just some of the tantrums of your, of your facade. And uh, as Mary's pointed out to you, very few of you are actually getting anywhere near your hurt self, actually. Yep. Just having a tantrum about your facade not being met. The key, as Mary pointed out, every time you engage more unloving behaviour in justification of your hurt, you're not at your hurt. Because the hurt person never would, would never choose to hurt another person the way it's been hurt. That, yes, it becomes such a strong feeling in you. When you hit the hurt, you go, I never want to do this to anyone. This hurts way too much. And there's no blame in that place. There's no justification. There's no like, oh, I hate my mum, brother, dad, whatever. It's just like, this hurts and I'm allowing it. It's a softening that what, what you're said, not experiencing. What I said was very important, Ed. Mm. Something that most people here have got no idea about, and that is when you truly connect to your hurt, you will never, ever, ever do what you've chosen to do uh, with your life after that. You won't. You just won't. So if you connect to your hurt and then in that connection you go around and hurt some more other, pe other people, you're not connected to your hurt at all. You're just in your facade thinking it's justified to go around and harm other people. And many of you, when you say you're connecting to hurt, that's all you're doing. You're, you're connecting to this justified feeling of rage that enables you to go and hurt somebody else. And that's not a connection to your hurt self. Because your hurt self is so hurt about those things that it would never choose to take the same kind of action with another person. Thanks, honey. Let's move on to our next question. Who discovered how their adult facade feels towards their hurt? Allah? Disappointed, disgusted, mocking, cynical. What else? Condescending. Yeah, a lot of those things that prevent you allowing your hurt self. There's also this huge emotion Oh, I can't spell. Because <laughs> I was thinking of the other word I want to write. Justification of the hurt at just exactly what Jesus was talking to Ange about. This, this, the facade says, I was hurt as a child, therefore I'm justified in hurting others. Do you see that one? 
And this one counts for a lot of you. There's a lot of feeling in you of like, no, I was hurt, so stuff it. It becomes quite a rageful place. Yeah. I agree, you are very hard on the hurt, childlike parts of yourself. But you also use your memories of hurt childhood events to justify being horrible to others. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alan? I feel blocked to my hurt self. I've got such a huge facade, quite overwhelming. Even anger, rage... And my hurt self, I, I can't feel it. Yep. I, I do get to an emotional state where I, I, I'm crying, but I still don't feel like I'm at my hurt self yep. at all. And, yeah, I could go on for quite a while, but that's, that's the <laughs> That's where you're the at? The truth, yeah. Yep. So did you, could you begin to discover this place that you're in? What is the opinion about feelings and emotions in this adult facade? What do you feel? Uh, what do you believe? I'm quite judging, I'm, and I'm trying not to be judging, which is all wrong as well. I'm, I'm realising just how, how much I, I hurt others, and I even remember this morning the first time I ever prayed to God, and it was such a manipulating thing as a child. The, f- the very first time I, I said, look, I've just entered this competition for a motorcycle, which mum won't let me have. How about you let me win this competition? <laughs> And in return, I'll, I'll be really good for, say, a year. I'll be good for a year. Yeah. And I didn't win the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but, um, hey? I, I just, the realisation, that, that was just a snippet of what was going on for me this morning, and just how I manipulate everyone mm-hmm. in my life, mm-hmm. including myself, Yeah. To, to get what I want. And it's just this huge facade. I yeah. can't see past. Yeah. I can't feel my hurt self at all. Yeah. Well, uh, like, I think that's really real and honest, Alan. Like, I think that's where most people are at. And they, they don't even want to see most of what you're seeing about your facade. Like, a lot of people don't even want to see that level of manipulation that does exist. Like, the facade's very manipulative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it was so daunting a few days ago when we, we all received a bunch of information, which was amazing because it was like, wow, it's tools. Yeah. But what I felt inside of myself and what I could hear going on was another opportunity to take from Jesus in yourself and now I don't need you anymore, I could probably leave now, I've got what I need. Yeah. And then at dinner time, it was like being in an aviary. Everyone was excited. So I think everyone, if, if we're honest, we're all feeling so excited about getting some tools to be able to work on this stuff and in total facade the whole night. Yes, <laughs> because it hasn't yet hit the truth that, that the facade's right. going to be confronted and it's all yeah. going to be pretty full on. Yeah. yeah, so it was a really, yeah. it was a full on night that, yeah. that particular night. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of things for you to think about. Um, you, you identified manipulation. Start to intellectually consider where manipulation was really dominant in your family system and how, how things work that way. Because obviously you thought that's a good thing to put into my facade. That's yeah. the way I'm going to survive. And actually yeah. the thing about the facade is that, it, like Kay said, that you believe this is the only way you're going to survive. It's not true and God's laws keep trying to break it down and show you it's not working. But somewhere in your childhood you decided manipulation is the way I'm going to survive life and yeah. you're going to have to break down that belief as a false belief. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I understand where that came from. <laughs> cool. Early cool. days. Good Goodo. Thanks, Alan. Okay, Gary? Uh, yeah, just um, did a lot of reflection from yesterday and it, it was, um, and where does my facade fit into all of this and and where's the sin, you know, in, you know, I was at the dinner table with all these women and, you know, um, it was like uh, my facade wanted wanted their approval, you know, so, and I'm thinking, well, you know, where's the sin in that, you know, and... I was looking like, well, it's intellectually it was unloving for me to get beaten up, you know, to allow myself to get beaten up. But then I thought... So, hang on, you've got to fill in some blanks here. How okay. are you going to get beaten up? 
Oh, by the What's the rationalisation? By what would you do to get beaten up? Put myself in the, in the situation. With the women? Yeah. But you didn't get beaten up in that situation? I, I was getting projected at. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that, what were you doing? The sinful thing you were doing, did you just allow, Allowing it to happen. No. Nope. This is, this is really important for you, Gary, because yeah. you do not see the sin in the level of sexual projection you put out towards women. And it is, and it is really damaging to not only yourself but to these women. Uh, and, yeah. you, you, and this remember I said this to the guys in the audience yesterday. You're all like, oh, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. But yeah. you've got to look at what you, you get out of this and what you put into this. Mm. Like honestly, it's like sleaze balls, yeah. you know coming from you I've talked to you about it in the past is very very it's like an emotional rape mm. and most women or not most women some women respond to that yeah they want to feel sexually validated by a guy and so they get into this thing with you mm. but that breaks their possibility of assault like you are interfering in their soulmate mm. relationship yeah. every time you do that you are not honoring their free will especially for women who don't welcome that kind of thing, mm. you, you're damaging like a lot of things in the environment by doing that. You know, you, you're channeling spirits who'd like to have these sexual engagements with women. Yeah. And there's a lot of sexual feelings that come out of you towards women. Mm. And I agree, sometimes it's because you have a false belief that that's how you're going to placate people. The mm. women around you, mm. but you got to look at what you, the sin in you, mm. what you want out of it, mm. and that's the area where you don't want to go, mm. and that's why it's a persistent problem. It hasn't changed in the mm. whole time I've known you, mm. yeah. and it's damaging your soul, mate. Like mm. it's mm. really damaging your soul. Mm. If you could see your condition as just as a result of that one addiction, mm. it's pretty full on. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, Kel. Um, yeah, can I just respond to that because um, I sat opposite Gary a couple of days ago and my first intention when I sat down, um, actually I was, thought I'll challenge this, the addiction of sitting with Bruce because, yep. you know, um, joined at the hip Bit sometimes in our addiction. Yep. So I sat op opposite Gary, that's right, and that's exactly what happened. My f I didn't go to, s I don't feel I, don't know if I, don't know if I sat there opposite him to get sexually projected on. Just hold them I don't know. I'm pretty sure I sat there. I, I would have had that. Well, what did you do what? in response to that situation, Kel? This is where yeah, okay. we need to be responsible. Yeah. What did you do? Did you say anything? I did can you see move? now that I, I was wanting to sort of give, put something back there and nurture that back, actually. Yeah. Now yeah. I see that. I didn't see that now until you've just mentioned it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And now I put two and two together, but yeah. Good. So there's stuff for you to look at where you uh, either want to receive that or you just submit to receiving that uh -huh. rather than have a soul-based and even action and word-based response of like, that's not okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So okay. I would look at that. Yeah. So the other yeah. thing I was going to actually say, because that wasn't one of them yeah. <laughs> until then, was um, how I've recognised my sin and one of my um, beha and my behaviour of projecting at anybody who was reflecting the same thing back at me, and that's what I've done all my life is from very young, and um, so I've so blamed what do you and, mean? and so I've got angry in that place of projecting blame, anger, rage at it, it, anybody, my, hey. mainly my family. Like I back to my childhood, and I had a dream last night that I was um, went at school in a school excursion, and I was in trouble, and um, then I shut down, and since then blamed. Everybody, all my life. So you're blaming them for whenever you feel uncomfortable, whenever you feel... Yes. Yes. And I agree, you intellectually get that sin, but not emotionally. Yeah. And yes. it's an ongoing one for you, hey? Yeah. 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 
Okay, two more people before we finish. I want to hear how your facade feels towards your hurt. So if we go Jane and Phoebe. Jane, um, something that I've tended to do all my life is just really suppress my hurt self, mm -hmm. just really suppress it. And um, how did you how do you do it, Jane? Through just wanting to conceal it and protect it. Yeah. So. And what what feelings do you project towards your hurt to in order to conceal it? Yeah. Um, I was writing down a few things um, here. To blame it, yep. um, you just you don't need to feel it. Um, be an adult. Um, hold, just hold on to that hurt and ignore it. Yep. Um, that it's weak, and I feel weak's a big one. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of judgment. How hey, you hammer yourself with? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thanks. Phoebe. Um, I feel embarrassed and ashamed of my hurt self and a lot of judgment as well and also like I want to punish punish that part of me yeah like I always just picture myself as a child like when I'm talking about the hurt self I see this like gloomy like child and that's my view of myself that it's all my fault and I want to punish it yeah yeah yep. even, yep. even though it's a part of me it's not actually a child but I don't know I always see this image of this child and lots of rage and judgment on it so a lot of rage and judgment projected towards mm. yourself. What do you feel about this other thing that I talked to the women about, about using the hurt from your childhood to justify behaviour? Do you feel you do that? Well, I have a lot of anger and rage towards men, so I, I, I do. I obviously yep. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd look into that as well, yep. hey, about the the rage, the sexual rage, the rage you have towards men and mm. where that's coming from and what beliefs are driving that. Yeah, that was yeah. going to be the one I put my hand up to talk about the sin because that's such a big one for me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, cool. Okay, uh, if we go to Nick and then I reckon we, it's uh, five to midday and I reckon we need to move on with the program after that. <clears throat> um, I'd just like to ask a question about the difference between justification and unjustified feelings and where they sit because I've identified that there's just this hold the mic a bit sorry, a um, something for me is this feeling that none of my uh, uh, feelings were justified they weren't so I had no right to have, the, have those feelings they weren't um, valid you mean they weren't valid yep. yeah but then there's this other feeling of no I'm completely justified in this and that seems contradictory yeah. to me. So I have a right to be, you know, to be in this anger or to be in my rage. Or can you see how though, if you if you are skipping over the hurt of never feeling that your your experience was valid, you might get very ragefully uh, determined to make sure that everything was validated and justified that you were feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that probably applies for you, Nick. Yep. Thank you. No worries. Okay, there's a couple of things that I wanted to highlight to the group just before I finish. And it's just areas where I feel it would pay to look. Now, some of you in the audience really treat your hurt self very harshly. You shut it down. You judge it. Rose, you're nodding. You're not one of them. <laughs> you might at some points, but there's a, there's the things I'm about to say apply more so. Okay? So, all right. These are some things for you to consider about how you your facade treats your hurt self and how your facade manipulates the world around you. Okay?
I'm the one who's been hurt the most. My anger, self-pity, my punishment of others, it's all justified. This is actually an avoidance of the real hurt self and it's the facade using hurt done to justify harsh treatment of others. And it's actually poor treatment of others and your hurt self. A lot of you do have hurt. Now, can you remember the two reasons there's hurt inside of us? Who can tell me quickly both of the reasons, Savannah? Um, I think because we hurt others and we hurt ourselves. Huh? We've been hurt by others oh, and we do yeah. hurt to others. Yeah. Yes. And the hurt we do to others hurts others and it hurts ourselves doubly. Now, what I see a really disturbing trend is to use this idea of there's hurt inside of me done by others to justify a lot of harsh treatment towards the people around us and our environment. So using this idea of I was hurt as a child to justify punishment, self-pity, anger, living in the drama of the hurt. Some of you do that really well, just live in the drama of it and it becomes narcissistic and you end up being really unloving to others. Guess what that does to your hurt self? It accrues more hurt in your hurt self. And you're going to have, remember I talked the other day about becoming sensitive to the law of compensation that's operating on your soul, telling you all the time, whoa, you just hurt something, you just hurt something, you just hurt something, you just hurt something. And a lot of you have just become completely detuned to that. Instead live in the drama of this, I was hurt as a child, I was hurt as a child. Not feeling this hurt self and also then hurting others and then denying that, that a sensation of that. Now your hurt self is like trying to tell you, this is wrong, bad things are happening, it's getting worse, I feel terrible, and you keep ignoring it. And that means it's going to be a lot of damage for you to work through. So, this, in this place we skip over the hurt done to others and we live in the drama of the hurt done to ourselves and we shut down any sense of the law of compensation that the hurt self would naturally feel. So that's what I want to leave you with, to ponder for yourselves. This homework we've given you, guess what, it's not all over now. There's so much to do, hey? Um, and we feel that all of the exercises that the three of us have given you over this period are really beneficial, like, as Jesus has said a number of times, we engage this stuff all the time, you know, wanting to really know what's going on inside of me, what am I really doing with my will, how is this hurt, like am I really, I have to get real, am I really changing in my day-to-day -day life? If I'm not, I'm not touching my hurt, you know, there's something else going on. Engaging the will to love. Anyway, we... <coughs> have given you guys heaps of tools and heaps of info. We hope that they're really beneficial to you in the time to come. Um, we've designed the whole program so that you can revisit it or you can rewatch it. And there's uh, PowerPoints and outlines and all kinds of stuff for you to, to go back to. So hopefully, if you'd like to take that opportunity, it'll help you continue to grow. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry we didn't get to hear from all of you, but we were a bit pressed for time anyway. So, all right. Jesus is going to come up next and we're going to do a personal truth session. Is that right, honey? Yeah. Okay.